Uh, what a debut for you guys, first off. I want to talk a bit more about your plans now. How are you going to be using the proceeds, and how does this fit into your global expansion plans? Oh, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on Bloomberg Live. Um, obviously, yeah, uh, like you said, it was a very successful IPO. Uh, we doubled in our market cap. Um, and, you know, with that, we expect to, you know, raise about 1.5 trillion Korean won. Uh, which is around 1.3 billion USD. Um, you know, we were the first in the market to offer services like easy pay, mobile bill payment, and authentication services. Um, and we are a very innovative company from our DNA perspective. And our strategy, I guess, is to you know broaden the service offerings and increase the engagement uh, led by cutting edge technology. So you know, having said that, um, we will use our uh, proceeds to you know expand on our digital payment side uh, both online offline and also in globally um, and you know we have to invest in our you know subsidiaries obviously to innovate products in our digital finance line of business for example you know we are launching our mts stock brokerage service yep. um, potentially later this year and early next year and for our digital insurance um, subsidiary uh, we expect to yeah, invest some there, um, obviously to offer you know more mobile friendly type of insurance service, uh, insurance products to our customers. And you know, uh, going you mentioned forward, also I with guess, the proceeds, Akiju, you yeah. were, you were looking to raise pro money to do some M and A as well. Uh, what That's are some right. of the look partnerships or, or joint ventures that you're thinking mm -hmm. about? Is it more on the fintech space, and how you look at it geographically? Yes, um, obviously, you know, we need to, you know, grow not just locally here in Korea, but, you know, from a global perspective. So we're looking at potential M&As or joint ventures or partnerships or equity investments into those uh, high tech companies who can actually support us from a global perspective. Um, you know, obviously, we are getting a lot of love calls from a lot of companies in Southeast Asia. Um, obviously, we can't, you know, specify names here. Not just yet, but yeah, we have been getting a lot of love calls and we are looking at how we can, you know, further grow our overall business, uh, you know, in the, uh, not just domestically, but from a global perspective, yes. Did you, do you have a USP? Is there a unique selling point? Yes, I mean, obviously, you know, Kakao Pay being part of the Kakao Talk platform, you know, we are already widely prevalent in our users' lives, especially for the Korean population. You know, when they, you know, ride the taxi or listen to music or sending gifts, all the payments are done through Kakao Pay. And, you know, uh, our services provide, you know, basically all these function with the convenience at, you know, at the user's fingertips. So this is one of the reasons why we stand out from the crowd compared to our other fintech players. Did you, I want to just get a sense of what you've been making of uh, this tech crackdown in, in Korea and whether you see that as actually having ended. Mm. Yes, very good question, very good question. Look, I mean, uh, let me speak about the overall policy direction of, the Korea, uh, of Korea. Um, the Korean financial authorities they actually, in fact, officially announced that their long-term strategy of continuing to foster fintech growth has not changed. Um, and recently, you know, strengthened regulations, which was, you know, act on the protection of financial consumers. So it was based on the consumer protection. It's aimed at emphasizing, at obviously, the principle of consumer protection in the long run. So, you know, what it means is that we before out the fintech players like us, CalPay, grows more significantly. Um, the government wants to make sure that we have all the right, uh, you know, uh, systems and consumer protection guidelines in place. Right. And obviously, you know, we already have that. Right. So, um, going forward, we will continue to make various attempts to increase consumer benefits with, you know, our innovative services while taking the lead in protecting the financial consumers in line with the authorities' policy directions. Right. Maybe you can go a little bit more specific. I, I have a quote uh, from one of the regulators who we spoke to recently uh, from the KFTC chairperson, and this is what she said. As platform companies grow big, some of them become gatekeeping monopolies and exploit that power, exerting a dual position as a judge and a player in the market. And the balance of power 
has broken. Your business model, Kiju, has been mostly on the brokerage services. Also, you're planning to, as you talked about, expanding into the fintech or the financial businesses like insurance as well. Walk us just specifically, what are you doing to address those concerns that they're saying that you are a gatekeeping monopoly right now? <laughs> well, I think, you know, that statement, I don't know, to me is overstated, but uh, I think in basically what the government is saying that is before we get to that stage, right? From a cacao paste perspective specifically, uh, we have been always from the very beginning getting the licenses, receiving the license that is required to you know, perform, uh, you know, our financial business. So, for example, we have already have the license for our uh, uh, investment securities license. We already received the license, our brokerage license for our loan services. And, you know, going forward, you know, we have got the preliminary license for insurance. And, you know, we hope to get the official license by end of this year or early next year. So we are taking the, you know, correct steps to build our business based on the you know, specific guidelines from the financial yeah. regulatory perspective. So I don't think, you know, we have an issue there at all. How, how has it changed the business model then, Kiju? Is it going to impact the company's future growth? Can you still continue to make money? No, not at all. Basically, you know, the only change that, you know, we made um, due to the recently announced policy was that we needed to make sure that our consumers and our users understand who is brokering or who is selling what products. So, for example, for insurance, we made sure that, you know, it was very clear that it was our subsidiary, Kakao Pay Insurance Services, uh, selling those products. And for our, you know, investment products, we said, uh, we, uh, you know, made clearly that it's our Kakao Pay Securities subsidiary who is selling that specific product. So, no change to our, you know, fundamentals and no change to our business model at all. Right. Well, Kiju, uh, what about your view of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and the like, and how will they fit into your business in the future? Oh, um, that's a very interesting area even for us. Um, uh, being part of a fintech company, we've already you know, been very uh, studying uh, deeply into the fintech, uh, to the you know, cryptocurrency business. Um, but there are many factors that we need to consider. For example, you know, the domestic regulatory environment, uh, you know, which we've been talking quite a lot about recently. So um, from Kakao Pay perspective, we actually highly value our blockchain uh, as a technology. And, you know, we actually started R&D in blockchain since 2015. And in 2017, we officially launched a commercial business, which is our authentication services, based on blockchain. Uh, it was actually based on Bitcoin, right? So we've been, you know, not just tinkering with it or starting with it, but we've been actually commercially rolled out. So um, obviously, you know, as you know, the Bitcoin price has skyrocketed, so we can't use Bitcoin anymore. So we're using Clay at the moment to run, uh, uh, run this business. But, you know, to go global, I think, you know, obviously yeah. you made, you know, the, you had a question on the global uh, side of the business. We think that, you know, this blockchain Technology can be the medium for cross-border services, right? So, Kiju, uh, it's a uh, yes. You talked a bit about your mobile trading uh, system that you're going to mm -hmm. be launching early next year. Uh, first of all, can you tell us a little bit more about targets that you have for users uh, when it comes to sales targets right now, and what are some of the major challenges uh, that you have to overcome before you launch this? Well, you know, with our securities uh, subsidiary, we already have more than 6 million users already um, on board uh, with a securities account. So uh, we think we have already a very sound base there. But, you know, obviously, you know, our aim is to make sure that the MTS uh, service, when it does come out, um, it is very user friendly and um, conven uh, very easy to use for, you know, those users who have never experienced, you know, stock brokerage before. So I think from our perspective, um, you know, we are looking at changing the way that, you know, the, our, basically changing our users' lives and their experiences through Kakao Pay as a, you know, financial service platform.